the gates of Booty Lawn. <laughs> All these portals and like all these butts coming out of it. So, Mr. Josh, what do you have going on this week? Uh, finishing the move, getting used to the new surroundings. There you go. Uh, shit. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I watched that movie, The Witch. The Vvitch. The Vvitch. <laughs> As we talked Vvitch. about, yeah. How was that? How was that? It's all right. It was okay. It was interesting. It's there's no. It's it's a strange quote unquote horror film because it's mm-hmm. more. It has more anxiety in it, really. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just because it's... It was recommended highly by me by this um, one of my co-workers in the past that was like, mm-hmm. he's a real big horror movie buff, so he liked doing marathons like what you do in October and stuff yeah. like that, and uh, that was one that he had recommended to me a few years ago, and I was just like, never checked it out. So would you say it's at least worth a watch? I think it's worth checking out. Okay, I don't cool. want to say too much because right. I don't want to spoil anything. Right, yeah. it's one of those things that you better to come in just not yeah. knowing anything. Just, it's, you know... Puritan kind of actually barely even because they were they literally came from England to uh, Is, America so okay, that first that's generation I mean. okay but you know the whole like witchcraft shit paranoia um, so yeah there's oh there's a few tense moments but I wouldn't say it's like scary okay fair enough scary well, uh, anything else rewatch Hellraiser nice classic yeah that's a good one how many there's a lot of them though right there's a few i've only seen the first one though i was gonna say i know that there's a point like many movies with a lot aka jason um (laughs) it does kind of dip in quality or it's all over the place quality wise but yeah yeah i've only seen the first one i guess pinhead was just so popular they'll Mm -hmm. just make more yeah i know which always sucks you know we were talking earlier today candidly about uh, unnecessary sequels and um, mm. all this stuff, so. Yeah, that was one. Uh, what else did I do? Gundam I'm almost Iron done. Man. Yeah, I'm almost finished with my uh, Barbasos Lupus Gundam. Nice. I, I still love that one because it still sounds like a disease. <laughs> but I still like it, though. It's a cool one. Well, his final form is Lupus Rex. So oh. there you go. King disease. That's what happens when you're dead. <laughs> yeah. You be just funny Lupus put, Rex it? It'd be hilarious if, like, House was in... Iron Blooded Orphans are like, oh that would my be god, amazing. It's, it's Gundam Barbados Lupus. It's never Lupus. <laughs> <laughs> you watched uh, quite a bit of House at one point, right? I think I recall. I think I've watched all, all of, of like the last one or two seasons. So, but I've watched a good chunk of it. What's his name? Hugh Laurie? Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. Yeah. I think it's Laurie. Laurie, yeah. Hugh Laurie. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty good. I remember yeah. him from uh, prior to seeing House. Well, a weird thing. Uh, let me rephrase that. <laughs> Um, House, I already knew about, Then I be, but I never watched it. Then I watched his show with Stephen Fry. Mm. Then I went mm. back and watched Black House. Adler, right? Yeah. 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 Adler and also just the Laurie and Fry. And, um, no, Fry and Laurie, whatever the title of their actual, just, mm. their, their last names of the show. But then I would, because of that, I got an interest into watching House, and then I watched House. And it's pretty good. It's pretty I think good. the first time I saw Hugh Laurie, and I didn't even know, because obviously I was just a kid, was the live-action 101 Dalmatians mm-hmm. movie. Because <laughs> for whatever fucking reason, Hugh Laurie is in that movie. That is weird. Yeah. yeah. He's one of the henchmen. I think he's Jasper? He I think was? so. He was the tall one. See, when I hear Jasper, I think of fucking Aladdin, but that wasn't the name. That's Jafar. Jafar. Jafar, yeah. Jafar. Yeah. <laughs> J names, am I right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, let's see if we did that. Um, shit, what else did I fucking do this week? <laughs> we ate out a lot. That's true. We did eat out. Tried Koku Noodle for the first time. That was mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, right. yeah. You should never go. had that. Yeah, it's a lot of food. It's a lot of I food. Finish all of it. We should, we should yeah, make an like, a, like an, yeah, we should like an eight dollar bowl of noodles. Honestly, like mm-hmm. hella worth. Like even if we didn't get the sides or anything, it was still worth. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, it's good. Uh, a lot better than um, this one noodle joint we used to go to that oh. here has been having issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, dare we speak of those issues? Yeah, well, they're not our sponsor, so we could technically. <laughs> so, so it's, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. Uh, oh, let's fill for <laughs> so time. So, I know where not to go eat. So, what's happening with Nama Ram and Mr. Josh? Oh, Nama I've been there do, before. Do, yeah, do, I them. Th- no, they were good. They used to be good. Yeah. What, what's yeah. the report? Okay, well, they I... They don't hate Hong Kong, but what's yeah. going on? <laughs> Well, I stopped going because last time I had it, the noodles, the texture was like very, um, like soft, mm-hmm. and then the broth was just a bit watery. Mm-hmm. So I stopped going after that. Um, but recently on Facebook, there's been this post that went viral where um, this woman went with her friend, and 
um, her friend had a child for, at like two years old mm-hmm. or something like that. Well, so the main person, she was congested from allergies. So they were just like, oh, let's get some hot ramen. Who, who wants some soup and noodles, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they live really close, apparently. So they go... And they were trying to get high chairs or something for, like, the child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And apparently the wait staff was, like, really rude, Aww. supposedly. So, you know, she just posts, like, the, uh, you know, she just puts a negative review mm-hmm. on Facebook. So the owner then publicly shares it and is like, oh, that entitled bitch review. Oh, <laughs> and gosh. so it's, like, real mature way to handle that <laughs> situation. <laughs> yeah, but... it's one of those things. So what I told Josh about it when we discussed this earlier today <laughs> is that... Um, which once again breaks the fact that this isn't on a Monday. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it earlier today <laughs> at, at yeah. three in the morning when Josh and I wake up to exactly. record this. Yeah. Uh, we were, we were talking about, um, I, I was saying that like, look, even if you want to say that, that's like some candid shit that you'd maybe say to a coworker in mm-hmm. jest mm-hmm. or, you know, we all, I, I, maybe I don't, I, ne- I never talk about shit about customers, but I hear that people talk shit about customers to their coworkers, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. like, I can, in private, in the, in the confidence of two people, or maybe a couple, yeah. whatever, right? But you don't put someone on, you don't put a customer on blast on social yeah. media, because then things like this happen. Now, mm-hmm. to be very transparent about my relationship with the owner, is I am friends with them, I, I do know who they are, um, I've been going there since the pre-opening beta testing mm-hmm. of all the stuff we yeah, used to we get went free. There quite a bit yeah we used, to, we used to get free food yeah even prior and then when they did open because i built the rapport with them mm-hmm. we went a lot and they even hooked it up a few times with oh, like nice. uh we would get like an extra sushi or appetizer if they had a new roll they would mm-hmm. always hook it up and then have me try it out and uh, our table try it out but i haven't been there in a while because the quality did dip my parents did go uh, a few months ago mm-hmm. and they told me about it and then I went, just not that I didn't trust them, but to be like, how bad? Yeah. yeah. Because my parents aren't even overly critical. So the fact that they were complaining, I was like, oh, that's not good. My parents mm-hmm. normally, not that they don't have no standards, but they usually just don't waste time complaining yeah. about nothing. Yeah. So I tried it out. It has definitely gone downhill. Even as like, he's a cool dude and all, but I feel like the overexpansion of hours and um, staff, perhaps maybe not the most experienced staff, I'd assume is causing these issues uh, and not being able to keep up with demand and Mm -hmm. clientele. But back when they used to just be open for dinners, the quality was a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's that. I mean, it's just, you could have just said like, hey, sorry for like, we don't offer this X, Y, and Z reasons. Like, you could have just taken it with stride rather than... Yeah. Oh, look at this bitch! (laughs) Title. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I go to Ito Ramen, and I like that place. Nice. Yeah. So, good old na- Nama Drama. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of entitled, yeah. hey, Mount them Rude! Uh, I'm just kidding. Anyways. <laughs> oh, no, her haircut just instantly changed. Right? <laughs> yeah, she has, the, she has the, can I talk to your manager cut now? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, Mallory, what you been up to? Uh, well, we tried a new uh, ramen place as well. Me mm-hmm. and my sister and my brother-in-law. It's Hero Ramen. Oh, on... I thought you were going to say it's called Nala. No. <laughs> um, no, it's Hero Ramen. And they're not quite open yet. They're H-I-R-O like... or H-E-R-O? I don't know. I didn't drive there. No. Nor did I get to, like, my sister picked what I ate, basically. So, like, I still don't know where we were. I know we were off of, like, 281. Were you, like, blindfolded the whole time? No, I also oh, just don't okay. notice things oh, like okay. that. Like, they'll take she me just places. Saw, she right. just saw squiggly lines all over uh, the place. And did that. I can say that. <laughs> I mean, that, it wouldn't be too, like, a surprise lunch. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too far-fetched. No, it's but. funny. I'm just wondering, like, were you held hostage? Like, no, are you okay? it's it's because like when we go places and we don't have the baby, oh, it's like take you to go somewhere to eat. <laughs> she had to be blindfolded during the. Um, it's more yeah. they like talk about random stuff that I don't have um, like anything to do with, so I'm like, what? It's like noodles. Noodles are fun. Oh yeah, like they went off about some tangent about mm. something with their like flooring, and that's when like I lose interest in like anything, is especially if I don't have any part of that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care if you get cherry or oak. Like, I, it's not my decision. Yeah. Pick what you want. Um, yeah, no, I hate people that are like that. What should I get? Yeah. And I then don't they, know. They, what they, should you get? Like, what the fuck are you asking me? Like, they talked mm-hmm. about it for a while, and I just kind of, like, zoned out and was, like, playing Pokemon Go, because we didn't have the baby, so I uh, couldn't just, like, sit and talk to another At least girl. you were playing in a, in a uh, safe situation Pokemon mm-hmm. Go. You yep. weren't driving. No, I wasn't. Yeah. I was a passenger. 
There you um, go. So I we did tried that, in Austin that one time. and it was really good. They're still in their like soft opening type of deal before mm. they grand open. Yeah. Um. So they were asking us like, what should we add to the menu and stuff? So that was pretty cool. And uh, I don't know when their grand opening is. They're on my Facebook. Um. And then I tried a new coffee place, which is really, which was really cool. Um. Don't remember the name of it. It's really good though. Um. My friend took me there. At like nine o'clock at night, but they have like a back room that they're gonna do like um, like computer games on, mm-hmm. and so they have that all set up. They haven't completely finished it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we were giving them like we were just talking with the owners and the manager about it, and that was fun. They gave us a free coffee because their card machine went down. So, and it was it was really good. I don't remember the name of the coffee I got though. Uh, it's been a long week. Honestly, um, I worked a lot. I did a lot of projects, starting more projects. Um, and then Friday, I think I slept. And then Saturday, I was up at like 8 in the morning to go to the park and go hiking. And then I went um, I went to play Pokemon Go when the event started with my friends. What, uh, what event was it? It was the Reggie Raids. I don't know why that always sounds so funny to me, but did someone just knock on the door? Yeah, I think somebody did. Oh, well, that was a thing. Okay. We're getting, we're getting raided. (laughs) Um, Um, no, so it was the Reggie raids, so we had, like, you had to pay. Yeah. Yeah, speaking Uh of that was perfect timing. (laughs) Reggie's just at my door. This TV looks like an apple. Are your bodies ready? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's just, just a funny thing. Anytime I hear that, there's a Pokemon we call Reggie side or whatever, Mm -hmm. and whatever, I just think of Reggie. So it's just funny to me when people say that. But anyways, go on. Um, so you like paid for the event. It was eight dollars, and you got like special research. But everybody could be a part of the raid, so you could get Reggie if you wanted to. You just couldn't get the Mega Reggie or Giga Reggie or something like that. Um, this is just so funny to me. I just imagine a big Reggie, a bunch of Reggies. There are. Uh, there's like a, a Steel Reggie, an Arctic Reggie, and then there's <laughs> one amazing. more. There's a Rock Reggie. Yeah. And uh, you have to complete all the research to get the Giga Reggie or whatever it's called. <laughs> you guys are making when me all, laugh. When all Reggies combined. Um, and so we did all that. And then I was like, okay, cool. It's like five. I want to take a nap before I go to the 13th floor for the blackout event where you literally wander a warehouse in the dark. Like, there's that no light. That sounds... It sounds weird, Sus. right? Like it Come does. In, children. Come You're into You're allowed this. To, like they give you a glow stick and you get to like you use it to like mm. see, but they can take it from you. Um the people can touch you, like just like scare you, touch you. Glow yeah. stick. Okay, oh, that was Mal- that was Mallory hitting the mic for um, So, we gave Straight it to our friend cuz I would have dropped it um cuz I also fell over a bucket, which was really weird uh, cuz mm. there's just this random like Big ass bucket, um, and I tripped over it because I was trying to tie my shoe in the dark because you can't see. And so my friend had our glow stick, and he just kept putting it in his pocket. So we just had to like feel the walls and stuff to make sure we were. Even though running. you had the tool to solve yes. this issue, <laughs> yes. Well, um, that's one way to do it, I suppose. Advanced difficulty, glow and it wasn't like chumps. it wasn't scary. It was more fun. Uh, I was actually a little scared at first because I don't like the dark. Like I still have a night light. That I sleep with because I don't like the dark. Mm. And when the power goes out, like, I kind of freak out. But once we got in there, it was, like, totally funny because, like, I felt bad because you could see other people and I accidentally started cursing in front of little children. And I was like, I'm so sorry, little kids. This is um. this is why um, <laughs> this is why it's hard for me to go to events when there are little children mm-hmm. just because of the fact of my brash behavior a yeah. lot. Like, I remember I went to... When Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, there were a lot of promotional events. Well, mm-hmm. I was really on the Pokemon High at the time, so I went to, like, a bunch of them to get the promo cards, to yeah. take a fuck, to vape niche pose next to Rowlet and stuff <laughs> like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're next, when you're the only adult in there in line aside that does not there with a kid, and you're screaming, yo, this is fucking hella hype, <laughs> next to a Rowlet, <laughs> uh, it's probably not the most appropriate behavior at a Pokemon event, but then right, at the I'll same right time, I just you. forget, and I'm just like... <laughs> right? Like, I felt bad, but I was like, we're also in the middle of, like, a dark warehouse, so I can't actually see you, so I don't feel as bad. That's true. You just close right. your eyes if you're going to commit a crime. Yep. 
Um, <laughs> Children don't exist if you can't see them. Yeah, you can't see them. You can't commit atrocities against them. And then yeah. we... Because it's downtown, so we went... Uh, we rode scooters. We rode the bird thingies, which was really fun. I've never done that before. Um, and there's, like, this one area downtown that has all these, like, rainbow lights. And all I could think mm-hmm. of was, like, Rainbow Road from it's Mario. Like that bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so every time we would go under there, we'd make, like, the uh, Mario noises. And people were, like, laughing. This one guy was like, is that Mario? I was like, no. And then we just kept going. Sonic. <laughs> oh. um, it's human teeth, Sonic. And then we were uh, we were going towards the Tower of Americas. And then we're just in this in the middle of uh, the Wally festival that was going on. Oh, Downtown? Diwali. Diwali. For those who misheard that like I did, it's not a festival with a bunch of Wally fan art no, and Ava no, ships. No. It's the Diwali. The Diwali. Uh, See, my festival. mind went immediately to like National Lampoon, like Wally World. So, like... <laughs> wow, we went to three yeah, different places. Yeah, y'all are okay. We're awesome at this, guys. Okay, mm-hmm. go on. Now. Um, so we went. We're just like in the middle of this festival, and it was really cool because they had like food and they had dancing and like music. And then we go to the top of the Tower of Americas, right? Um, and we're just like, we are the only ones in this bar area that are wearing jeans and a t-shirt. Everybody else is like super fancy dressed up. Yeah. Super fancy traditional or like wearing suits and shit? Like wearing suits and shit. Oh, okay. oh, and so we look... Why? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I was like, I was the enthralled water. with the view because I've never seen... I've never been up there before. So Everyone had... Everyone had vaudeville mustaches, and we're just like, step right up to the wall, Monocle. fresh of all. Come right up, Ken. Yeah. What was the name of that wrestling stable that had that oh, look? Oh, uh, the vaudevillains. The vaudevillains. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> what happened to them? Did they die? Uh, no. I know they had... <laughs> no! They're wrestlers! Oh, that's, the first, that's the first thing he asked. <laughs> they're wrestlers! It's highly likely! <laughs> they're, they're, like, did their careers die? Wrestlers right. have three yeah. times chance more of dying in their job field than anyone, than cops or EMS. I know, they could have uh, just gotten, was, like, hurt and then went and lived a peaceful uh, life. Tell Owen Hart that. Wasn't it Aiden? Was it Aiden English? Aiden or English. Yeah, and the, I know the other he kind of, like, stuck around for a bit, but the other guy... Just disappeared, he, uh, right? Yeah, I think I, so. I think he had so. issues with, surprise, surprise, WWE and Vince McMahon, so... Oh. I think yeah. he just jet, and then yeah, and then the other dude tried to. Aiden English tried to to you know last, but yeah, was not digging it. But yeah, I guess I did. Anything else other than crashing a Diwali festival? Um, I got to see fireworks at the top of the Tower of Americas, which was cool. Nice. And then today, I, I do? oh, I watched a new anime with my sister. It's new to me. It's been out since last year. It's called Pokemon. <laughs> no, it's a uh, it's. A Promised Neverland? Ooh. Is that a... Uh, Josh is my resident... I consult him about I've titles. Like, it. Okay, it is a thing. Um, <laughs> that you're not is. just making it up. Yeah, right? Like, no, it is a thing. It's a real one. Um, well, no, what, well, what I was going to say is that the reason I have to ask sometimes is because uh, sometimes people... There is a proper international title, and sometimes mm-hmm. people are big weebs. Mm-hmm. And want to be like uh, Shingeki no, no Kyoji, Yoshi Kyoji. Attack on Titan. Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> Just say Attack on oh, Titan. Oh man, you watch SNK? It's like yeah, I like King yeah, I like King of Fighter. Yeah, that's basically it. And <laughs> okay. So it's just like okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's actually cool. a title. Okay. Or, so yeah, uh, uh, it's called no Yaiba is another one. Uh, the Promised Neverland. And mm. apparently, Peta ruined the first like season for people because they tweeted something about it. Oh yeah. Good old so, and then, like, me and my sister were reading the thread, and it's like, why would you spoil this? Like, what is wrong with you? Well, there's a lot wrong with PETA, first Well, yeah, of all. but, like, the fact that they, like, it was just really funny that PETA had something to do with this, and I was like, wait, what? That's true. That they had to tweet about this anime. I was like, why, though? Like, leave it alone. <laughs> Go do something else. <laughs> and then, yeah, now I'm here. All right. That's been my, uh, my week. All right, my week has actually been very unproductive. I don't know, fuck all, okay. other than the bare minimum for stuff. So everything's been getting done still. Episodes are coming out as is, but I just have been kind of chilling out a little bit more. Okay. Um, been running on too much caffeine, uh, and not like the edge lordy. I have Starbucks every day. I mean, I do, but <laughs> all, well, almost every day. But um, in the sense that I've really, I have actually been over caffeinating, and I've been feeling the negative effects mm. of that. So. I've been um, trying to get a little more sleep, a little less caffeine, and then also um, taking it a bit easy on not doing too much high stress stuff without, yeah, more water. Yeah. And just so that way I don't just die. Um, yeah. 
Other than that, Witcher 3 and Hat in Time in between. So I always try to have a game I'm super concentrated on. Mm-hmm. Hard, a long game with a lot of narrative. Well, Witcher 3 is not necessarily hard, but what I mean is it actually needs a bit more focus. Hat in Time's a lighthearted, really cute platformer. The Switch port just came out. Runs fine. Uh, there's a few bits of slowdown and whatnot, but then again, The Witcher 3 also has a few technical foibles. Like, uh, it is a good port for the most part. I still stand by that and do say you should get it if you want to be able to play Witcher to go. I think it is still really cool. Mm-hmm. But I did run into an awkward issue uh, in which there are several cutscenes that happen back to back to back to back to back. It's technically supposed to look like one big cutscene. But because of the Switch's lack of RAM, it loaded in between every 10-second mm. segment. Uh-oh. So it would be a thing where the guy would be like, He's over there! Get him to the thing! And then it would buffer. <laughs> yeah. Then it would cut over to Geralt's side. We can't go over there. I gotta do this thing. <laughs> and then it would load and be like, The portal's opening! We gotta get to the thing! The thing! The witch! They're going there! <laughs> and then I was like, okay, this is a little bad. So Awkward stuff like causes. that. The cutscenes don't translate well sometimes, especially when there's it's uh there was a lot of elemental shit going yeah. on, so I'm assuming that's what was causing that. Uh the only other technical issue was what uh what it was actually very early on when you do the tavern it was a big tavern brawl at the beginning, and when Geralt gets up to participate, the cat ran through Geralt's chest. I wish <laughs> Switch allowed capture. Unfortunately, for certain games, they don't. They disable the capture, the video capture feature. Mm-hmm. But I really wish they had allowed it then, because I wanted to upload that clip so badly. Like, there's a cat sitting on the table. First of all, the cat was not even touching the table. Then when Geralt stands up, the cat is behind him all of a sudden and then runs through his chest as he's getting up to get into the fight. And I was just like, that was amazing. This is a moment I wish I, I could that. capture. But um, yeah, other than that. Just waiting for two very anticipated ports with, unfortunately, no release date. I'm assuming both not until next year, which is Outer Worlds. Amazing game, but despite uh, I'm probably going to play it for a bit on PS4, I do want to wait until the Switch port to finally fully delve into it. Mm-hmm. And then Indivisible, same thing as well. Um, have it on PC, but I really haven't played it much because I'm waiting for a Switch port to go in on it. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, other than that, the only non-video game related news on the docket that I did want to mention is that Terminator Dark Fate apparently sucks shit oh. and is uh, estimated to lose about $100 million, fall $100 million short of their budget. So, surprise, surprise, even though we kind of joked about it several times due to the weird movie tie-ins and forceful promotion of it, uh, Terminator Dark Fate is going to fail and likely gouge and it's bad. What a, what a surprise. I, I kind of do want to see it for a laugh. But. I, say, I think I have seen on Twitter that uh, it's... it's um, <laughs> This really isn't saying much, but it's the... It's one of the better films after Terminator 2. Yeah, which is, yeah, like yeah, you said. It, ju- it doesn't, yeah. There's so much garbage. Much. You know, that's very similar criticism to two, uh, to Tomb Raider, Jesus Christ, to Underworld Blood Wars, mm. where they were just like, wow, this one's actually really good, probably the best one since the first one. Yeah. But, but the criticism <laughs> they're lying is like, I like the Underworld series, I own them all, but they're really bad films, objectively. Uh, so. I know I've seen the first two. Yeah. I didn't... Three was the so prequel. Okay, I haven't seen that. So, so then was there's two more months? after that. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I don't even remember which is the other one that I saw. I just remember they, they were at some castle in the snow, and then they met, like, some other older vampire? That was the second one, I think. No. Or, no, or was it the Definitely th- wasn't the second, the second one. Oh, okay. So you saw one of the other ones after. Yeah. It was definitely not the last one. one, because the last one... Is like all in the city, and there's like okay. no medieval ties at all so at that point. Didn't, guess I didn't even know there was a fifth one. Yeah, I think I'm only seen the. Like first it one. just came out like in 2017 or something, so like it's oh, damn. it's like fairly new. Uh, that's how okay. that's how not relevant it is. Hmm. Well, yeah, I I think I have it on digital. Maybe we'll watch it one day and lull at it. I mean, it's actually pretty good. But the thing is, it's a funny thing where they have they can easily say it's not complete shit, but word it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I need to fucking look this up now. Yeah, go ahead. Because I'm just... just in case I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure. I, um, I don't know. I haven't. I think I only. Unless it there was just that big of a gap, but I thought I there was I five. Most of the time, I was like really confused, and I think I think Charles Dance was in it too. Yeah, at one point, yeah. Uh, Bill Nye, not Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Uh, Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Oh, I remember Bill that Nye. coffee shop name. It's uh, the Lucky Bean. <laughs> Finally. The Lucky Bean. Yeah. 
<laughs> from Underworld, the lucky <laughs> No, <theme>. not from... <laughs> Wait, was it Blood Wars that he's in? Blood Wars was the final one, I thought. Yeah, it's a 2016. No, 2016? Okay, so yeah, it's, it's got Charles older. Dance in it. Yeah, so that's the one then. 2016. So it probably was. You probably did see that one then. Maybe it's probably early on. I was so confused watching it. It's so, it's really weird like, and, and a mess. Because then the one before, that's the one with their daughter. Or was that the one with the daughter? I don't know. Is remember. that Awakening? Awakening! Okay. Yeah, because yeah. the daughter awakens. Spoiler. Yeah, there's the first one. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. Second one was Evolution. Yeah, then Rise of the Lycans. Yes, mm-hmm. that was the prequel. Then Awakening, then, then Blood, Blood Wars. Wars. Okay, cool. I'm okay, not even saying there's five. The last okay, one. so today's episode <laughs> is brought to you by Radio Public. Yay! Radio Public is an app on iOS and Android uh, where you can listen to your favorite podcasters and actually support them at the same time financially. Yay. So make sure to check us out on there as well as your other favorite podcasts. Most of them are going to be on there. So check them out at Radio Public on iOS and Android. Also, second not official sponsor, but did tell them I wanted to go ahead and plug in on here. Uh, Shubzilla and Bill Beats are about to embark on their tour. So they, like many nerdcore rappers, not fucking, you know, rolling in fucking stacks of mm-hmm. Benjamins. Uh, touring's expensive and yeah. they do have their touring costs. So we're going to link it below. Make sure to hit up uh, Shubzilla and uh, Bill Beats GoFundMe um, I'm going to throw them a few bucks I'll throw them a few bucks uh, and so you know I told them already we're going to go and plug it I, I, I spread it on Twitter Yay. and uh, they are going to it is 100% going to just be used for their touring costs gas whatever so you know awesome hit them up um, uh, I helped Mega Ran out with his uh, thing he mm-hmm. he had a ca- even someone as big as Mega Ran arguably one of the biggest names in the game yeah needs that shit I think even MC Lars occasionally does it when it's mm-hmm. a really long or big tour oh yeah, yeah. so Shubs and um, Bill Beats uh, for those who missed it were on the last episode so there was a lot of fun mm-hmm. and so I told them you know well just some bit of a plug you know who knows yeah. who it'll reach so good 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 uh, and then finally why is that in the sponsor thing okay now it's moved okay. <laughs> So, first bit of news, Death Stranding, review copies are out, comes out this Friday, Mm -hmm. for those who are still waiting for it. I gotta say, I'm probably gonna cancel my pre-order. Now, I still love Kojima, I'm still interested, Mm -hmm. so I will, I'm gonna get it to eventually, but it's not just like super high priority anymore, because from what I've heard from most reliable reviews, not the IGN one, which is getting a bit of flack for over-exaggerating just how, you know, boring it is, I think they were trying to be... IGN was trying to be Jim Sterling when they're notorious not for not being like that. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to be a little edgy and then yeah. they may have overestimated their um, lower ranking score of it, giving it, I believe it was like a 6 or 6.8 out of uh, was there 10. Too much rain? Exactly. They're notorious <laughs> for bad reviews anyway. Yeah. So it's not like anyone was too surprised, but they did get mm-hmm. a bit of flack on it. Apparently, it's not that bad. Like I said, from what I've been hearing, it seems like the kind of game I would give maybe a 7 out of 10. Um, but I'll have to see once I actually play it. I'm probably going to at least uh, get a copy of it for review purposes and then go from there. But mm-hmm. uh, apparently it's gorgeous. A Digital Foundry has a really cool tech demo video that if I remember I'll throw in the description below of um, the graphical capacity of the game because it is the money is there. It runs well and it looks gorgeous. But apparently, as unhinged Kojima would be, has a lot of nonsense narrative, very long uh, boring cutscenes that mm-hmm. uh, pretty much make no fucking sense. Very roundabout ways to just describe, just to th- waste money. Basically, it's a whole bunch of how expensive can we make this game cutscenes. So there's that. So we'll see. But a, a little disappointed to not hear that it was that great. However, not surprised because um, as much as I wanted it to be good, Unhinged Kojima was already worrying me. I I'm, I expressed that in a couple episodes <laughs> where I was just like, we'll see where he goes with it because it is really weird. Like, yeah. he, is, he was going to take it there, wherever there was. And it looks like where there was in this case was okay. But um, there are other people who are defending it, saying that there is an art in the long-drawnness of it, saying that, you know, it's uh, no different than, say, maybe even Game of Thrones, where they could have mm. easily just compressed that entire series into, like, four seasons maybe. But, mm. of course, they made it, like, eight. So it's one of those, you know, to make it epic, there needs yeah. to be a bit of fluff, so on and so forth. But we'll see, we'll see. I still haven't checked it out myself, and none of my normal trusted reviewers have touched it yet, or in terms of has dropped a review for it yet, I'm sure they've touched it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm very curious. I know Josh has absolutely zero interest in it. Mallory, not really, like... Uh, I mean, I was interested in it, and I will probably watch my brother play some of it, but I'm not... 
I don't have the time to dedicate to it okay, right yeah, now. Okay, a long so. game, I'm sure. E- yeah. Even if it's just because of cutscene. Yeah. Uh, PS4, PS Pluses, or uh, PlayStation Plus free games of the month for PS4 is going to be Neo and Outlast 2. Well, the recent announcement a few days ago... We finally of, get Neo. Right? Uh, <laughs> from the recent announcement of Neo 2's release date of March 2020, it was appropriate timing for them to go ahead and give the first one out for free for people to go ahead and hop in there. It's a very difficult game. I do enjoy it, but it is really tough. With a lot of fucking menu management, yeah. a lot of skill tree management, and that shit just intimidates the fuck out of me, unfortunately. I'm so worried about gimping builds and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Plus, the game itself is difficult. Yeah. Outlast 2, already own it, but that's a good game to shit your pants because it's even scarier than the first one, in my opinion. Nice. Uh, because the NPCs are a bit more aggressive. It has more of a religious overtone, where religion was a bit of an undertone in the first one. Religion's a major overtone, and you're basically in a town of zealots and stuff mm. like that. So, fun, but scary. Okay. So, there's that. Um, scary, but fun. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, any major interest, either of you, in either of those games, checking them out now that they're going to be the zero dollars if you have PlayStation Plus? I mean, I've been holding off on buying Neo for so long, so this is the perfect time to get it, because it's fucking free. Yep. Um, I played the Alpha, like, years ago. (laughs) I remember that, yeah, you actually got in there. Yeah. I was playing it, but I got scared right away. (laughs) It was really annoying, like, I think they fixed it now, but back then, your items, like, your armor and weapons would break so fucking easily. Zelda. It was a pain in the ass. (laughs) <laughs> so that was my main gripe with with Neo. One thing I've heard about Neo, uh, this is through Castle Super Beast because I uh, again I didn't get too deep in there, but what they did say is that apparently Team Ninja and Koi Tecmo or Tecmo Koi, however, are apparently really good at listening to feedback. So Neo mm-hmm. or OG Neo was uh, adjusted and crafted perfectly to fans' tastes, and I really wish more developers would take note of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bethesda. So. Uh, Mallory, you? You gonna uh, check out either? Probably not. All right, cool. So, um, Steam, <laughs> Steam recently mentioned uh, that they are going to start implementing some systems in their uh, interface to encourage revisiting your reviews for a game. Uh. The average Steam user does tend to write a review when it should be more of a first impressions. Mm -hmm. So what Steam's kind of trying to move towards uh, to be more fair to developers for better or worse over time is to perhaps consider your initial review of it a first impressions, Mm -hmm. and less, of course, you do beat the game before you write it. But like they said, the average... Based on release date to time, most people are just writing reviews based off their first hours or minutes into the game. So what they're saying is, and then if you do it, do it that way, really do consider (laughs) going back (laughs) and revising your thing to... um, Basically, they claim it was actually a lot of dev feedback that said, yo, like a lot of these reviews are fucked or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's due to review bombing or even... Reverse review bombing, mm-hmm. bombing in a positive sense. Yeah. Um, that they would like people to kind of consider this. So Valve's kind of pushing, trying to think of systems to implement to try to uh, make this fair to both sides without yeah. leveraging players to have to do it, but also being fair to the devs and at least letting people know that they're encouraging it, which okay. I think it's fair. Yeah. You know, just like my Borderlands 3 review, which I revised a month later, like, it's one of those things that it could used to do it. It, it happens yeah. to be the premise of my new spinoff uh, with John, which is kind of revisiting the news and uh, adjusting or reiterating opinions. So I think it's a good idea. There's yes. For some reason, it was met with some flack, but mm. as the internet does. Do you guys see any uh, possible... Or do you feel it's a positive thing? and do, Or do you see any possible negative repercussions from... Uh, encouraging people to revise reviews Uh. since reviews are kind of like for example when metacritic and game reviews do come out they do tend to even if the game does get better aka no man's sky still has a pretty bad initial metacritic Mm -hmm. doesn't matter bad metacritic overall and when you look at the official reviews from critics for the game will forever have bad reviews yeah um so I'm just curious how they're going to implement that, because I know Steam can keep track of your playtime. So, at least if I was thinking of doing something like that, I would probably have it that if Steam recognizes you've only played, like, maybe one to two hours, 
your when you put it up, it will be labeled first impression or something okay, like yeah, that. Okay, yeah, that'd be cool. And then if you've if they've read, you've clocked in like maybe five to eight, you know, a little bit more, then they they'll say, okay, this qualifies as a review. Okay, yeah, I think that'd that's be how very I cool. would probably do it. That's smart, like, actually. But... And or... it's as simple as hitting it with a badge based on gameplay. There's, like you said, it mm-hmm. keeps track of it. Or like yeah. when they um, like. I guess when they write the first review, like, it has, like, one to two hours, and then, mm. like, once you finish the game or you've gotten, you've played a little further, like, it'll come back up and just be like, hey, uh, is this still the same? Something like that. Like, I a little think, notification. actually, I yeah. think they did make note that they are actually going to implement something very, actually, similar to that, I but think I think your would, idea is very yeah. good, too, that they should do that. They're going to make the Steam version of Clippy. Basically. <laughs> hey, I see you played this game for an additional six hours. Right? Yeah, I, think, I, I don't think know what said... anybody says. I loved Clippy. Like, I used to just leave him up on my desk, uh, oh. uh, like, up there all the time. I loved him. I, 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 would look, right? I would look at the other options because you could have more, you could have, like, a weird baby and there were, like, other weird oh, yeah. mascots. There was, like, a weird like, Einstein dude. A weird yeah. Einstein. Yeah. Einstein. I remember those. Yeah. Hashtag I bring Clippy. back Clippy. Yeah. There you go. Oh, they actually tried to, but it was like a big meme. Like, Windows didn't officially bring him back. Uh-huh. But they did like an anniversary thing where he was like back for a day or some shit like that. Oh, we shit. covered that in the podcast, I believe it was one of our very first episodes. It was about in February of this year mm-hmm. where they did for the anniversary of Clippy. They brought him back temporarily and then he's gone again. And general. we were just like, yeah. why? Like, we just don't need Cortana. Give us Clippy. Need, yeah. yeah. Give us I don't Clippy. use her. I, yeah. I, I would yeah. ask Chief, Clippy. I see you're writing up a resume. <laughs> <laughs> With the way, with the way uh, Halo is going, you might need to. Um, But yeah, I think they should do something like that. Or like, uh, if you haven't played the game for a while and you get back into it, like they should uh, like definitely have something that shows that. Mm -hmm. That way, the developers know, and it's not just. Well, actually, yeah, no. Thankfully, that does actually that is the case. It does show that you've only played like point five hours, and people will just disregard you usually. Um, But yeah, no, I think it's. I don't. I don't see any entirely bad things that that can I just, cause. I think people might get a little upset if they do, like, like a lot of notifications. Like, hey, yeah, update your you review, you update your that. review. Because I yeah. think someone did express that as a concern of getting hit with, like, a... Say that you've played, say yeah. you've played like, a 300 games. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, God, here it comes. Or even if they had, like... Hey, you even spent a thousand hour, hours, hours on Skyrim. Do you want to revise your review on Skyrim? Yeah. It, no! It's good if it's modded. Like, they could have a little tab on the side... Right, yeah, on the side where it could be like reviews, and people can click on that. To no get one there. wants a tab for that. I'm, I'm, just, tr- I'm just kidding. No, yeah, no, they could do that. No, that's true. No, I just think they could. I mean, that could just uh, be easier. Yeah, no, it could be. Yeah, have a have an. I mean, or under community and then whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyways, right. so there's just that. Something. Um, Fallout seventy six is in the news again. Right. Uh, this was Isn't actually this actually came out the day after we it's talked free about real it, estate. which is funny. Basically. <laughs> So, in Australia, they have a very uh, strict law where if a consumer feels ripped off or wronged, Mm -hmm. you are able to request a refund, which will almost ultimately pretty much... Like refund, repair, or exchange. Exactly, exchange, Exchange. yep. So, uh, basically, uh, this this has been in effect for a while, and a bunch of people filed... When Fallout 76 first came out and was factually broken, Mm -hmm. a person in my Discord that keeps defending Anthem and Fallout 76 is not being as bad as people say. It was factually broken. <laughs> and um, people, of course, at that time... It's still broken, by the way, so yeah. this still stands true. Uh-huh. Um, but it was broken at the time, so people were requesting refunds naturally. I keep glitching, I'm lagging like crazy, it's not causing my, my internet, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and ZeniMax made all the excuses in the world on why they don't need to exchange... Because they do have to, based on the terms that Josh said, have to... Ju- mm-hmm. Uh, provide one of those three services mm-hmm. or reasons for each one that they cannot yeah. do. We cannot repair, we cannot refund, we cannot blah, blah, blah. So basically, all these people well, have we been we denied. It. Well, in recent <laughs> life, <laughs> the Trade Commission in Australia came back and looked at the claims again and were just like, no, absolutely, this shit should have been refunded. Mm-hmm. ZeniMax's defenses were all bullshit. Uh, ZeniMax being the parent company of yeah. Bethesda and Elder Scrolls. I forgot I said that earlier, but for those who don't know, not everyone keeps track of the little ZeniMax logo that pops up before the game. So, But anyways, um, so they reached back and said, no, you guys, you guys are going to refund everybody who wants a refund for this shit. Uh, of course, your claim had to have been between November 2017 to, or excuse me, 2018 to uh, July of 2019 this year. So, big window. 
big yeah. window, so yeah. this is going to be quite a few um, refunds. Personally, I re- this would never, this is never going to happen in corporate America. Mm-hmm. But I wish we did have a thing like this here. I also where think the Australian up, dollar is a lot more. Yeah. Like I think games are about a hundred. They're very expensive yeah. over yeah. there. So same thing Ooh. with Canada bucks. They're a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and they're also really strict up their their uh, Peggy rating over there. If they still if they use Peggy, I don't know, but uh, I know that internationally most things use yeah. Peggy. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever their version is, is very strict too. Mm-hmm. They uh, GTA is not allowed over there. <laughs> Wolfenstein is not allowed yeah. over there. There's a lot of I games that are think not. They recently allowed five. They did recently allow yeah. five. Yeah, that was eventually. Uh, but I believe there were some censors in it though, mm-hmm. if I recall correctly. Oh, he's right. It wasn't in in the entirety. But yeah. Uh, that aside, I do like this policy, and I think that a consumer protection policy would be nice to have here in the States, but I just don't think that would be reality, yeah. because as far as the corporations are concerned here, as long as you've bought it, that's good enough. Yeah. So there's that. But yeah, good, yeah. good, good. Wallet 76, I'll get you. Uh, Bloodstained, originally <sighs> dropped on Switch as a kind of blurry... Huh, I'm sorry? I said I can't wait till Fallout 76 is not on the docket. No, it'll be on the docket every month. <laughs> no, um... <laughs> but uh, be like, here's your daily reminder that Fallout 76 still sucks. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the clock will always be reset forever. <laughs> but at least Fallout 76 isn't the main topic this time. Yay! So it wasn't big enough news for that. It okay. was big news, but not big enough for that. Uh, Bloodstained came out on Switch a few months ago. It's actually already been a while. As a blurry, broken bit of a mess, lag like crazy on some portions. Looked like shit, like, mm-hmm. whether it was in docked or portable mode, very blurry, which mm-hmm. is the same because Bloodstained is one of the best Metroidvania games to come out in a while, spiritual successor yeah. uh, to the Castlevania series, and definitely uh, more of a proper game than... So the, so the Castlevania game I brought up on the podcast a few episodes ago, uh, the kind of Greatest Hits era one, where there were characters coming back from all the games, mm-hmm. that is a mobile game, so it's probably going to be shit, because Konami... <laughs> Which is a bit of a shame because the premise sounded cool. Yeah, it looks, yeah. It looks and nice. And it looks pretty badass, it but it is mobile, nice. yeah. so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, uh, Bloodstained's big anticipated, huge rework, basically probably going to reinstall the game on your system probably, uh, fixes all this stuff. So yay, Bloodstained, totally worth picking up now uh, on Switch. Nice. Yay. Which that I was recently a, picked it up. Which you recently picked it up. Yep, so I'll be so, checking that whenever I can. I'm very excited to hear what you think about that. Very cool game to play in your spare time. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, Kotaku, Deadfire, and other sites are all part of this big network. And they recently uh, have been in big trouble. Kotaku actually may get shut down, potentially. We'll have to see as it evolves. Mm-hmm. But they got into a big quarrel. Uh, they, uh, the companies under this blanket of this network all stood up against their parent company, which is a go figure some bullshit firm that doesn't care about entertainment mm-hmm. actually other than making yeah. money. They're called Great Hill Partners Equity Firm. So oh, okay. someone who obviously does not give a fuck about media. Uh, yeah. They stood up against them to be anti those autoplay audio ads that oh. like the, the videos that yeah. just oh, pop in the corner. Yeah. Hey, do you like the... Bah, bah, bah? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kotaku, uh, no huh? The things that yell at you for no yeah. reason. Kotaku, uh, Deadfire, and other sites in the network all band together and stood up against the parent company and said, "Look, we get things have to make money, but mm-hmm. we are hundred percent want this shit off our site." Yeah. Mm-hmm. To which someone from Deadfire was fired, Oof. and Jason Schreier, one of the lead editors at Kotaku, wrote some great pieces like that huge very long article on anthem earlier this year Mm -hmm. the bad conditions of it the the, the nitty-gritty of why anthem became shitty uh and uh, and a few other ones expose pieces on gearbox Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so jason Trier, big senior exec uh has stated that he the future is unclear right now they may all lose their jobs so uh but they felt all the all the companies kind of knew this was kind of a thing and majority i'm sure they didn't i'm sure that was not unanimous Mm -hmm. but a majority did say hey look Despite the fact we may lose this, this is a pretty important battle to stand up for for consumers. Uh, So they gave my respect through that. Um, Scary bit of risk to put your job on the line for something like that. But yeah, I think that there is, there should, I get it. I get that money needs to be a thing, you know. I get we do ad rolls, I get stuff like that. But I think there is a crossing the line. Uh, Reading your cookies to a very creepy extent like Amazon does where they 
show you shit you were just looking at on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. Uh, Facebook, period. Don't need to go into that too much. Recommending shit just because it picked up what you were talking about. Yeah, shit like like that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, and uh, and then, you know. And and these ads are are, are ass. These are pretty much the auditory visual equivalent of those uh, five reasons doctors hate him Mm -hmm. ads and then Mm -hmm. clickbait. The ones where they use the nasty ass pictures it looks nasty at first, but yeah. it's really just some dude's elbow or something up close, yeah. and it's just some weird <laughs> shit. Uh, there are things that I feel are excessive, and I think that this was a good move. So, yeah. much respect to them, but a bit, you know, worried about their well-being, because... I mean, but, someone will pick up Jason Schreier, but the thing is, yeah. not everyone will probably get picked up. Though I have to say, if you're not using Adblocker, go and use Adblocker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On it's Chrome, one of those or things. Or Firefox, you can use the no script. Yeah. Although, that's mm-hmm. a little bit more annoying. Is say. it? Oh, God. I just I use Chrome, know. so... Yeah, Chrome ad blocker is a bit easier. Um, Firefox's no script is way more technical because mm-hmm. it's literally like every single line of scripts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. so. But yeah, those are great options. If you don't have those, look into them. Yep. And for those who do not want to block the ads per se and just hate these kind of ads, they're fighting for you. Yeah. yeah. So. More power to them. Yeah, no, it's... I, I, I can definitely not... It's hard to say unless I worked for one of them if I would have had the balls to do what they did because that's a big move. Yeah. That was a big move. So yeah. we'll see where it ends up. Wishing them the best. Now, people were not wishing the best. BlizzCon was this past weekend. <laughs> uh, got a few things. Um, let me just get out of the way that we aren't going to discuss Warcraft 3. So if you guys are in there, there were a few bits of news, but they just weren't that. I didn't give a fuck because. They're actually doing Warcraft stuff? I think they're doing a remaster for it, just like Diablo 2 remastered. I don't know. I really didn't pay attention because Warcraft... I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, Warcraft is fine. Don't get me wrong. But there was some article about, oh, the original FMVs were in 1080 when we made them. Then we compressed them to 240 to fit on the disc or some nonsense like that back in 2002 or whatever the fuck. So, yeah. I don't know. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, so, news we give a fuck about. Uh, Josh brought this to my attention. Pretty much the day after we recorded the last episode. Again, news likes to drop the day after we record because Mondays. Yeah. Uh, but if we do it to the end, that's it. Mitsubishi. On Monday. Mitsubishi mm-hmm. not liking their anti-free speech, anti-Hong Kong stance has pulled out sponsorship. This did directly affect them at their latest uh, tournament, which actually had a bit of a smaller show floor. A few thousand less. It's not like they suffered that mm-hmm. severely, not as bad as they should have, but they did lose quite a bit of money. Mitsubishi was a big sponsor and pumping some dough into them yeah. and pulled out because they refused to lift the ban, Yeah, uh, which is going to go into the main topic, which we're going to get into in a second. But before that, before that, we got to see some great Diablo 4 and Overwatch uh, stuff. So mm-hmm. they dropped the cinematic trailer yeah. as they usually do and then the gameplay trailers for yeah. both. Uh, cinematic trailers, um, let me just get out of the way, I'm just gonna say, Lord of Horse shit, uh, Diablo 4 has nothing to do with anything, like, that cinematic was dumb as fuck, uh, it, it was, was just like, though. I mean, it's, it's yeah, you can, it everything has nice. a good looking, yeah. everything has a good looking oh, cinematic nowadays. It's just like a super flashy way to introduce, uh, here's the villain. Yeah. And then Josh and I watched those, all that stuff together, and we, the thing I kept complaining to him, and he found a few comments that reiterated, was, I thought was funny, it was like, it's not willing. He keeps saying yeah. blood of the willing in the trailer, and no one in that <laughs> no thing was, was willing. fucking willing. <laughs> the guy just keeps, you know, fucking Voldemort minus, yeah. keeps going up to everybody, and he's just like, oh, the blood of the willing, and they're just like, but, but I, no. None of them gave consent. <laughs> None of them gave consent. It was just a bit, unless it's a PSA for that, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was, it was just really bad. And then Overwatch just wasn't necessarily inherently bad, but... I just felt it was very... It almost emphasized how unnecessary Overwatch 2 is mm-hmm. uh, by showing a bunch of characters just saying their signature lines running around in a very yeah. Avengers uh, reminiscent from the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. I understand that uh, the Overwatch theme always kind of sounded like Avengers since mm-hmm. the get-go, but the way they implemented the shots in combination with it really was almost that scene of uh, from the yeah. first Avengers, I believe, where they do the whole the going circle, around, yeah. and I'm just like, you basically just did that. Yeah. Why? Um, but yeah, I don't know, I just ran into both together, but I just feel like I wanted to knock out both of the cinematic ones as well. Feedback, additional feedback on the cinematic uh, trailers, the story uh, trailers? I don't really have anything to add about the Diablo 4 cinematic trailer. I know we saw the gameplay one, and 
I guess that was an in-game cinematic? I don't even know what it was, but it, yeah, it like just it, looked like a super high-def Telltale game. Yeah, when you said that shit, that shit made me laugh so hard. <laughs> it, it really did look... There was something about it. I don't know it if the... It just looked so flat. Yeah, the, the, the footage in general was either 2 HD or missing some sort of filter or texture yeah, to it. Yeah, it was real weird. Uh, especially that scene yeah. when she's standing over the cliff and looking at the horizon. Yeah. It looked so barren and blah. I mean, some of the gameplay looked okay. It yeah, just it looked like, like Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. You know, Which was fine. It's always Ugh. been good. Yeah, but just the scene where that guy was just talking, I was like... Oh, and then, and then the, the character poses. You oh. select me. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Straight up. The fucking looks like, like a typical character select screen where they're just idle until you hover your cursor over them and they're like, oh, oh, I gotta do something. Yeah, the now. weird thing about that trailer was the fact that they kind of tried to shoot it like a cinematic trailer, but it was all allegedly in-game. Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, going to Overwatch 2... Um, here are my gripes. One, it fucking just looks like Overwatch. Yep. <laughs> like uh, a, a very, just... a very common. Uh, I, I, yeah. When I researched after we watched it, a very common gripe. Like it doesn't. Nothing looks new, at all. There was a scene in the cinematic trailer that I hope alludes to a new mechanic, which was where Reinhardt and uh, what's Br- is Br- it Brigitte? Brigitte or Brigitte, Brigitte yeah, whatever, whatever like they did that fact. little combo ulti shield thing mm-hmm. and I'm yeah. like okay if that's supposed to introduce a new mechanic cool I don't know if that's $60 worth though yeah um and then one huge <coughs> gripe lore wise is that it seems like Overwatch 2 is when they're finally getting back together so it's like Overwatch 1 you're just fucking like farting in the wind while everybody's just talking about their backstories. Like, yeah, it basically like, Literally turns... nothing happens story-wise in Overwatch, Overwatch yeah, 1. it's all backstories. Like, oh, shit's finally happened in 2. It's Which just... almost seems scummy because it seems like that is what they're going for. Yeah. Want to find out what happens? You're invested in these characters, own all those figures, Better have be, those posters, own the up. Second one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Should have just been a DLC. It really should have. Or a, or a $30 expansion. Like I said, if you're gonna... Me and us halfway. I would have accepted forty. Okay, mm-hmm. even a forty dollars expansion. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. Think yeah, with fine. with a new mode, uh, new characters, Stories, and, push, yeah, uh, and then like, the PVE. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thirty forty. Thirty forty. Yeah. Uh, around that range, but not a full sixty. Yeah. Just. <laughs> that's just. It's just a big update, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mallory doesn't play Overwatch. So I don't. I don't play think anyone wants to hear anything from her. Oh, Diablo, maybe. Uh, I liked watching the trailers just because it gave me that, uh, that... Like, Maybe that's why you enjoyed it a bit more. You don't really play these games. And well, I'm not trying I to be played, a dickhead when I say I played that. Diablo. I oh, just okay. don't play Overwatch. Like, I didn't give a shit about Overwatch. I was like, eh, it's not good. Well, you made a good call. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you're one of the few. Like, I was, like, more excited over uh, Diablo, and I saw it, and my, my roommate was like, hey, this morning at, like, 9 a.m., I don't know why we were awake this early. It doesn't happen like this ever. Because Diablo... Because the Abolo. But I got to watch it, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and then getting to see the gameplay, it looks just like Diablo, which mm-hmm. made me even more excited because I loved Diablo's gameplay. Like, Diablo's fun. It's, it's, tried it's and always true. been tried fun and to me. True. Except fun. for when they fucked up the uh, the bid the bid for Diablo three, and they fucked up the uh, auction house, and mm-hmm. the whole economy uh, got yeah. all fucked up yeah. using micro. Basically, tried to push real money and <clears throat> all that nonsense. Yeah. Which eventually got patched out. Um, but it made me excited, and then I remembered I'm not going to be able to purchase it. <laughs> so that's cool. A uh, couple of things to notate for both of those games, respectively. Diablo 4 did confirm there is going to be no offline mode. It will be online only, which is a first for the series, oh, in which weird. case they're forcing you to play on with pugs or with people. That's weird. Or your friends. So uh, there's that. Uh, and then like, Overwatch that's, 2... That's a very hard to pass for me, so... Yeah. <laughs> and, then yeah. Over, and then Overwatch 2, despite the fact that Overwatch 1 is a bit of a patchy port to Switch, is confirmed to be launching on Switch. Now, maybe... Mm-hmm. Oh. Maybe because it's going to actually be designed from Switch out of the gates. Might be a bit better. Be a bit better. Maybe they'll drop a big patch and fix mm-hmm. Overwatch 1, but at the moment it's still a mess, so that's not really something I'd be excited about, not to mention, again, I'm still on that no Blizzard shit right now anyways. Uh, Diablo Immortal confirmed to still be a thing, despite the fact that Diablo 4 has been announced, which is what people wanted to begin with, and no one really wants Diablo Immortal. Uh, of course... Like many people who still think I'm not making a point with all this Blizzard news, there are still morons out there who are going to play Diablo Immortal, and that's who they're going after. Mm-hmm. So make yourself the victim. Go for it. Have fun. Um, 
And then finally, our main topic, if you do want to get in on this conversation, other than harassing me on social media, you can also uh, hit us up at disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. Once again, that's disconnectedcastmail at gmail.com. And what we're going to be talking about right now is CEO J. Allen Brax non-apology that he did at the Blizzard conference. Now, I saw a lot of articles saying how CEO, big man, big dick apology. I saw uh, several celebrities, cosplayers, gamers I follow buy into the apology that they clearly either didn't watch or are too um, accepting of uh, because the people that talked about the apology, uh, a.k.a. the uh, people I follow on social media address the main topic more than Brack did during the entire apology. Now, there were several problems with it. One is the fact that they don't ever directly apologize for anything. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem is the fact that they don't even bring up what they're apologizing for. That was the biggest issue. As we watched, I I watched the apology (laughs) with Josh, uh, I was saying that the main problem is just the fact that he just kind of starts in the middle of the story. He goes like, so this is... Yeah, guys, and you know what's been going on. It's like almost how it kind of starts. He goes, he kind of just is like, hey, guys, you know, it's, you know, it's been rough, as you guys know. And, and, but like Josh said, what if people aren't really, you know, they don't listen to this podcast yeah. or they don't watch it, they yeah. don't pay attention to industry news whatsoever, and they, the game comes out, they're just like, oh, there's a new one or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they just like BlizzCon, there's a big Blizz Mark, and they go there and that's it. They don't know. What are you apologizing for? Second of all, to take a point from Jim Sterling, uh, that I did want to bring up that he made a very good point of is they didn't fix the problem yet. So you can't apologize. Mm-hmm. If I am a spouse beater and I'm still beating my spouse actively and I go, sorry, I know beating my spouse is bad and I'm really sorry. I, I, I did it. And then I'm still doing and I'm like punching her in the face as I'm apologizing to you, this is the equivalent of what... Uh, and people say I'm hyperbolic. Yeah. And this is the equivalent of what he's doing, basically. With Blitzchung's suspension still active, mm-hmm. there's nothing to apologize for because all this progress he said that the company is now moving forward to make, it's all this nonsense, means nothing. means nothing until Blitzchung's... The suspension that Congress members themselves have requested be lifted mm-hmm. is still active. And until you undo your wrong, there's nothing to apologize for. Because you can't apologize. Because there's, you haven't done anything. Um, the other thing that... Uh, final, one final thing I do want to take from Jim Sterling's thing that he did point out is the fact that as he's apologizing, there's a very awkward moment where he makes his big apology, pauses for applause, gets awkward silence instead, but then as he's about to start talking again finally gets the applause, and for a split second has a little shit-eating grin, like, smirk on his face, like, got him. And then immediately becomes solemn again and moves on. It's a very weird robotic-looking thing when you watch the actual apology that you'll see, where he just, like, a a real quick smile once the the applause starts, he goes, (laughs) and then moves on, and then, like, immediately becomes very solemn again. What if that guy, um, what if that person was, like, hired to do it, and he's like, oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> which later on, at the end of the apology, uh, on that note, there is a guy that's a little too hyped at the end who, when there is no applause, mm-hmm. uh, again, you, uh, I'm going to link the apology below, y'all can watch it, yeah, uh, does go, mean, Woo! Yeah. and then like then everyone starts clapping. Uh, the, one of the, sorry, I made the mic clip. Uh, one of the very last ones uh, yeah. that did happen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I noticed that too. A couple of ironic points to point out about all this nonsense, other than everything we've said already being a whole mess of mess is that in blizzard's offices they do have all this free speech Mm -hmm. uh represent yourself equality nonsense all over the place so they don't even their tenants are all over the walls in the workspace and they don't support it Mm -hmm. then the thing that made it even more rich that i wanted to point out is the fact that brack was wearing a fucking lbgtq plus pin blizzard rainbow pin on his collar while making this announcement. Now, all he doesn't make any reference to that community, you know he made sure to wear that shit for mm-hmm. brownie points. Mm. It's like... Jesus. Like, I don't know, just all this mess. Even though the LGBTQ characters in the game, that quality of them doesn't even exist in, like, the Chinese version yep. of the game. So... 
care it's about not, these so much. Thank yeah. You. Anything it's, else? It's cringy. Anything else to add on for you guys uh, in terms of the apology? I think I pretty much said like pretty much covered. And then like what I said, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just some guy hired. You know, just like just like the Fall seventy six when they announced the NPCs and the mm-hmm. one guy was like yeah. really excited about which it. which uh, for a fact, uh, especially at that that event and at the Game Awards, they uh, are. Uh, known to uh, give certain select audience members lots of drinks for free. Mm-hmm. So. Wins their favor. So, I mean, me and my sister, I didn't, I didn't watch any of BlitzCon. I was too busy. Um, but me and my sister talked about all the stuff that's going on, and um, it was just kind of weird to see the different stances that we're taking on it. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of people who still. I understand. That I'm a bit of an asshole when I keep going, you hate humanity if mm-hmm. you're supporting Blizzard still, although I do somewhat feel that way. Like, I, I may be exaggerating, uh, you know. But I do feel that there is a sense of hypocrisy where you, like one of my posts, I said something like, supporting Trump, I mean, excuse me, being anti-Trump, but then still supporting Blizzard through all this nonsense mm-hmm. is a bit of a disconnect in terms mm-hmm. of where do you, like... So certain ba- so if Trump made a game you really like, can he get a free pass? It's one mm-hmm. of those things where I, I wanted to bring up the question, because no one wanted to take on that question. Mm-hmm. But I bring on the thing is, where do we draw the lines? Is it because Trump yeah. is Trump, where it's all cool, it's hip to hate Trump, but Blizzard makes Overwatch, so... Ooh, no, no they're doing the Hong yeah. Kong thing, but ooh, I don't want to address this. Like, and, and no one... It's just... I don't know. Well, like, me and my sister were talking about it, and I will never sway somebody to do anything. Like, we're all humans, and you can do whatever you want. Well, the people um, are supporting Blizzard. I don't know if I call them human. But, <laughs> but I mean, I'm, for for me and my sister, we were talking about it, and she still, like, I told her I was pro like, I wasn't going to buy another Blizzard game, just because they're going against their own values at this point. Mm-hmm. It's the hypocrisy. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, but I want to support the developers. And I was like, well, some developers are leaving, like, yeah, Blizzard anyway. Even the ones inside have been internally protesting mm-hmm. it. Like, they've been so, taping up the Every Voice Matters Like, she's probably whatever. still gonna, she's, she's gonna still buy Diablo because that was one of our franchises that we just love, like... If I could, yeah, and you know, feel okay about it, I would buy the game. But yeah. I and, and therein lies my frustrations, right? I've ended to Josh about this. It's very good you put up the dev thing because I wish someone had combated me with that, so I could have at least had a compelling mm-hmm. like argument or a good. That's a very good <coughs> counterpoint. Um, the devs are suffering because of CEOs' nonsense, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so with that, and shareholders and yeah. parent yeah, companies, we uh, and Tencent, yeah, and, and that's very true. Very good thing you brought that up because yeah, that's very true. The devs are suffering because of this, but like you said, there's internal struggles and stuff mm-hmm. like that. The other thing I was going to say about it all is the fact that, um, he, oh fuck, I brain farted. That's okay. Well, say, I, know the, I think it was like the former CEO was vocal about it. Yeah. I think, uh, I think it was the former CEO it was. It was someone who used to be part of Blizzard, and they were very upset with how they were handling things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God damn it, I forgot what I was going to say. But mm-hmm. anyways, the the whole point is uh, there are arguments you can make towards it, but what I was going to say is that's the thing that frustrates me the most is this whole, and I understand it's not so black and white, it's not easy. Josh mm-hmm. and I had, again, an argue, a very, an argument, excuse me, a very good, very... <laughs> what were uh, you guys uh, arguing at yelling. each other in very, that? Uh, so very, very... Uh, <laughs> we were throwing punches practically. <laughs> No, we were we were both on the same. Oh, we were, on the same page, we were, we were, just yelling. Yeah, we were we were, we were agreeing really forth. aggressively, yeah. uh, but no, we had a very uh, compelling conversation. <laughs> we had a uh, compelling conversation about um, the fact that when people are just not active, not no action about this, this is the problem, right? Because I was telling him, you know, it's like the people who were just like, okay, you're on your high horse about Gearbox, mm-hmm. uh, whatever, Patrick, but but. But Borderlands, but what difference is going to make anyways? You're just, you know, you're not going to enjoy Borderlands. And uh, it's not going to stop them. They're not going to not make money. And I'm just like, well, no, because if literally zero people bought the game in protest, if we all did band together as a community and they sold 30 copies on the first day or zero copies on the first day or a thousand out of a million, whatever, the mm-hmm. you know, it would be a big deal. It would show the shareholders. It would show them. Yeah. <laughs> that people are pissed about their actions. But by going, eh, and shrugging, and then going ahead and 
uh, buying Borderlands 3 anyways, and it sold a lot, and it was critically acclaimed. I mean, I, I talked to my my roommate, because he just picked up a Call of Duty, the new one, and he was like, yeah, kind of don't support it, but I bought it anyways, and I was like, See, oh, that why? mentality breaks like, my head I don't so understand, badly. and I mean, I, I don't like talking about like po- politics or anything like that because i don't want to change anybody's mind like you will make up your own mind and do your own thing like i, said, I, I support humans say that, um, <laughs> well just real quick i just want to interject just because i know people are going to be like well oh, yeah. i'm because i'm always trying. i'm not always trying to change my mind. i just want people to at least look stop ignoring issues and facts and being selective yeah. uh, jay like, oh, stop man. being on uh, there was autopilot. a certain yeah well n- there was a certain term jay used that was really good that was basically was like selective, selective protesting yeah mm-hmm. selective protism selective activism yeah. my oh, whole yeah, point my whole point with hating trump but then these big companies that are doing very similar things mm-hmm. you're still buying their products and just shrugging off their atrocities yeah. Yeah. well i mean going into politics here let's hey. do it here we go let's, let's like do it one one huge pet peeve of mine is when certain um like you know even members within the gop are like oh we got to get rid of trump he's horrible he's a horrid person but you look at their policy views and they agree 90 percent on policy with trump yep. they just don't mm-hmm. like trump because He's a big mouth idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who, who says the bad parts out loud. Yeah. And that's really all it is. And you got, you know, people in the Democratic Party who are similar to that as well. They talk yeah. about how terrible Trump is. And yet, when the Republicans vote to increase the military bill so that we can kill, you know, civilians over in the Middle East, hey, they're fine with that. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, it's like that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of um, hypocrisy and shit like that. Yep. Um, that's the thing that pains me the most. But then just, how, like, yeah. And that was the, the thing my sister was getting at is like, they're all hypocrites and they all do the same thing. So what's the point? Yeah, yeah there's some guy who got, in, yeah, yeah, some guy was on my Facebook fucking ragging on me about that shit, basically saying, that's what corporations do. And I'm like, yeah, so we how shouldn't we accept stop, it. Like, how yeah. do we, like, we how do we stop them from doing it. this? And how do we, oh, that's the thing. Ah. So, so during the apology, <laughs> one more thing I was going to bring up is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> One, one thing I was going to bring up real quick is that during the apology, there's like a portion Lucy where... Lucy and uh, Schroeder and Lucy. That's it! <laughs> That's it. Uh, there's a part where he um, he made light of the protesters outside. So yeah. there were protesters, mm-hmm. and he pulled a Todd Howard. Todd Howard did a very similar thing with Fallout 76's announcement in which Brat goes... Uh, yeah, you know, so from now on, we support, we want you guys expressing yourselves... Saw a bunch of you guys expressing yourselves outside this morning, haha. <laughs> yeah. Basically diminishing and making light yeah. of the protest, as in like That's wall. Not cool. <laughs> Angry gamer nerds, am I right? <laughs> Is basically kind of like the attitude he yeah. gave. It was very dismissive. Very. Uh, it's like no, you guys are still committing an atrocity. Yeah, it's like, you're still wrong. You're yeah. Still, you're still terrible. But I mean, it's just it's weird to hear different opinions on. This type of stuff, especially It's when... very polarized still. Mm-hmm. Where I feel there should be very clear cut on the stances people should be making, it's very 50-50 from what... Oh, actually, not even. It's very 70-30 from what I've seen on my mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, lots of people already forgiving Blizzard because of this non-apology. Yeah. A lot of people just n- never having had an issue with Blizzard to begin with. And yeah. then just a few people who are like, fuck Blizzard. I mean... It's just like... I just feel like that makes it easier for them to do this next time. Speaking um, of Call of Duty, uh, also part of the same company, by the way, yeah. Activision Blizzard, mm-hmm. so still supporting the monster. And that's why I was like, um, they were like, we are all going to get it and we're all going to play it. I was like, I'm not touching that. Go. Not Look even going to be now. able to touch Diablo at this A time. true missionary. Like... <laughs> I just wish they'd leave video games alone. Like, just leave us out of it. Like, yeah, get 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 ugly politics somewhere else. Yeah, but unfortunately, else. games like, are fucking expensive to make. I know, but at the same time, like, we were the ones just sitting in our rooms playing these games, not really doing anything with like any of the other stuff. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, because I know someone's gonna say something about this, so let me just nip it in the bud, mm-hmm. which is. Yes, there's always been corruption in business. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy was trying to make his big man point to me as if that's oh, yeah. not what I was fucking saying. Uh, and maybe we were just ignorant to it back then when we were kids, whatever. We were, but we were children. I so. feel like if something <laughs> this severe had happened then still, it would still would have been brought up. This is something mm-hmm. we could have retro, like, retroactively seen. Or, like, uh, one, of my, one of my friends and was then like, like, oh, wow, they did the same screw job back in the N64 days. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they, my one of my friends brought up the fact that like now that we have all this social media is the only reason we heard about 
uh, Chung situation. And I was like, I think we'd still, we would have still heard about it without social media. Yeah, in the next like, EGM monthly. Yeah, yeah. Like, there would have been something. News didn't not exist before social <laughs> right, media. Right, like, so it's just it kind of weird to hear, like, the different opinions and all of that and to talk with people about it because, like, it is a very big split. Yeah. And people are going to support games and companies like this even though it's yeah, the horribly dis- wrong. The dismissive nature is just what bothers me about it. No one wants to talk about it. They're just like... And who cares? Yeah, they're like, eh, it would have happened anyway. And but Overwatch, and but Borderlands, and but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or then it's like, well, then I have people who are defending Blizzard, and I'm like... Okay, well, that's I even can't, worse. I can't do yeah. that. It's like, bad enough when people are just apathetic yeah, to it, but it's even worse <laughs> when people are just like, yeah, fuck Hong Kong. It's yeah, just like... If you're telling me, like, oh, but I still want to play these games, it's like... Okay, that's one thing. If you're telling me that, yeah, you know what, no, f- you know, Blizzard's fuck right. Hong Kong, though. Like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 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 weird to hear the different opinions on this one. Yeah. There's so. three lines in the sand. <laughs> so I'm just going to stay all the way out of it. I'm just not going to play a Blizzard game. Too late. You're already a part of this podcast. You've okay, already cool, gotten pulled well, into it. But you can just, you can still, yeah, you can still. I mean, I'm just going to be me and do what I do, so. There you go. And just not play Blizzard games. There you go. Sorry, Diablo. Like yeah, a good I'll person. Oh, Which wait a Diablo second. Diablo 4 doesn't have. <laughs> Got him. All right. That's how they know well, we're playing that game. Play, you can still play Diablo 3 again. All right. Nail him. Uh, beat the dead horse enough. Right. I'm assuming we're good. I think we're done. All I right. wish we had a gavel for this one. Boof. <laughs> God, I've just been watching the four hour trial of Tim Heidecker. Uh, like the whole four hour nonsense. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Uh, where can everyone find y'all on the internet? It's Mr. Josh. Uh, YouTube at SuraPlay5. Yeah. And then <laughs> Twitter and Instagram at JoshiroJoestar. Miss Mallory. You can find me on Instagram at awesome underscore Mally. Um, and then I think that's it for right now. All right. And you can find me on at ZD Rocker on most social media platforms. You can find all the stuff on slimmageentertainment.com. And you can find all the episodes of the podcast at disconnectedcast.com. Uh, just to let you all know, next week, uh, MC Oh My will be joining us out of Seattle. And uh, he'll be calling in and... Hanging out with this with a bit. The episode with Chubbs and Bill was good, so I'm very excited to hang out with Oh My. Oh My was very cool the last time I met him a few years ago. So, good stuff. Good stuff to have him on there. And other guests working on to get him through the pipeline. So, other than that, we will catch you guys every Monday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next episode, see ya. Bye. 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 Bye